Pathmark is the intelligent tool for website lead generation. With increasing online competition, over 98% of website visitors don't convert. The ability to successfully show your value proposition and support visitors in their buying journey separates you from the competition online. Pathmark qualifies and converts leads on your website by figuring out where they are in the buying journey and influencing them in key decision moments with relevant micro experiences like case studies, intro videos, and much more. Stay relevant to your visitors and increase conversions by 50%. Add Pathmark to your website in seconds. Let the AI do all the work and get access to 50% more qualified leads while you keep doing marketing and sales as usual. Check us on pathmark.com. Welcome to today's episode. Let's talk about today's guest. We have Johnny Price, VP of Fundraising there at WeFunder. How are you doing today, Johnny? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Uh, it's, it's it's great to have you on. And well, Johnny, I'm sure our listeners are tuning in wondering what WeFunder is all about. So let's kick it off with that. In your own words, can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so WeFunder is a tool that helps startup founders raise capital from their customers and community. So normally when entrepreneurs are raising capital, they're raising from venture capital firms or angel investors who are usually kind of millionaires. Uh, and what WeFunder is all about is democratizing uh, startup investing and letting everyone invest in cool startups they love, not just rich people, whether those startups are you know, tech startups like Substack or Mercury Bank or Replit, or whether they're main street businesses like breweries or restaurants or coffee shops. Okay. All right. Interesting. And so then that way our listeners then could get a good understanding there of Week Funder then. What would you say is that key part on the you guys like to solve clients? Yeah. So we're a two-sided marketplace, right? So we have entrepreneurs, founders that are raising capital, and then we have investors who are investing in startup companies on the platform. So to take the founders, I think that, that there's kind of two problems we're solving. Um, the main one is we make it a little bit easier to raise capital. So now you can turn your customers into investors. You can publicly promote the offering. You can get in front of 2 million WeFunder investors, and that's a, a new pool of capital that you can you can raise money from. Um, and then the other kind of use case is our thesis is, especially if you're a consumer-facing business, if you invite your customers and community to invest in you, then they're going to be more loyal customers. And if you turn your customers into owners, then they're going to spend more money with you. They're going to churn less. They're going to tell all their friends about you. And that's going to help you win and accelerate the growth. So those are the kind of the two things we're doing for founders, make it easier to raise money and, and help them build stronger relationships with their customers. And then on the investor side, we're basically allowing ordinary people, middle-class Americans, to invest in early stage investment opportunities, you know, as well as millionaires. Normally, or at least historically, you had to be an accredited investor, basically a millionaire, to invest in companies before they went public with an IPO. What WeFunder is doing is, and, and this is part of a new law um, that passed Congress in 2012 called the Jobs Act, this now enables um, ordinary Americans to invest in early stage companies. So they too hopefully can get into the seed round of the next Uber and kind of benefit from a lot of the wealth now that's been created by startups in private um, before, they, before they go public. Okay, all right. interesting like that. So then, is there a, a a certain vertical segment that you guys like to go for, or is there an ideal ICP for you guys? Yeah, we're actually pretty eclectic. So we funded, you know, a lot of kind of tech startups, um, you know, but then we've also funded, like I mentioned, breweries, mainstream businesses. We funded soccer clubs. We funded movies. Uh, we funded, you know, CPG companies, biotech companies, medical devices. Um, so yeah, all throughout the economy. And then we have, yeah, very early stage companies raising uh, like a friends and family rounds, raising $50,000, $100,000, all the way up to like Mercury Bank's probably the, the biggest company that's done it. They raised 120 million series B, um, you know, institutionally led, uh, fundraising round. And then they opened up $5 million and funded that from their customers on WeFunder in 24 hours. So really a range from kind of 50 K to 5 million. We just focus on the U.S. Uh, geographically, um, and but all th all throughout the the United States. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, a pretty eclectic, uh, you know, ICP um, from a kind of industry sector and a stage perspective. Okay, awesome, awesome. So then, how would somebody usually find out then about WeFunder? Is there a top client acquisition channel for you guys? 
Yeah, we've experimented with a lot. We I wouldn't say we have a kind of clear winner, right? Um, say so we've kind of we're pushing on on multiple fronts. I think we get a lot of inbound now. Um, I think if you Google, you know, community round, um, you'll find WeFunder pop up. I think more and more people are starting to more and more founders are starting to kind of learn about and understand about the concept of community rounds. And so we get a lot of, you know, inbounds. Um, and then, you know, we have a team that I lead, uh, the business development team that's trying to go out and connect with startup founders that want to use the platform. Um, so we're both doing direct, direct outreach to founders, um, either through you know, emails or, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter DMs or getting warm intros from people in our networks. Or we're establishing partnerships with VC firms or, you know, fractional CFOs or lawyers that work with startup founders or accelerators so that as they're connecting with founders that are looking to raise capital, they kind of refer them over to WeFunder so we can help them with their capital journey. And then WeFunder's a two-sided marketplace, right? So, you know, we also have the investor side of the equation. Um, from an investor acquisition perspective, it's quite interesting. We're one of those marketplaces where the supply side of the market really drives the demand side. So, you know, when we have a company like Substack launch on WeFunder, um, they raised $5 million in a day from their, you know, probably millions of users. Um, Substack sends an email saying, hey, we're letting our fans and writers and customers, you know, invest in us as part of this fundraising round. And then thousands of those people will go to WeFunder, create WeFunder accounts and invest in Substack. So, the founders of the companies that are raising money on the platform have probably driven um, overwhelmingly the kind of acquisition of the investor side of the marketplace down the last you know 12 years since we found a launch in 2012. And obviously, if we're kind of acquiring that investor, then hopefully we can remarket to them and show them other deals that we think they might be interested in investing in and convert them to invest in multiple startup founders, you know, over the months and years. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Great, great, great. Thank you then. Um, so that way our listeners who are tuned in then could go ahead and visit you guys. They could always check you guys out at wefunder.com. What role then does a website play for, for client acquisition? Uh, yeah. So on the founder side, uh, if you're interested in, um, you know, learning about the, the pros and cons and, you know, the, the FAQs, the process, then wefunder.com slash raise, you can go and just kind of, you know, read the, um, Kind of how it works uh and then just yeah start an application you actually don't need to talk to anyone at wefunder you can just like fill out the, the your wefunder profile push it live and start raising money um usually uh our team will jump on a call with you and you know help answer any questions you have that kind of thing so that's kind of how we're acquiring uh the founder side of the marketplace and then on the investor side yeah it's very simple like i say most of the investors are coming from you know, companies that are raising on the platform. So there, the founder is sending an email to their network or they're sending an email to their customers or they're posting on their social media with a link to, you know, wefunder.com slash pathmonk or whatever. And then that investor goes to that page. They see the pitch deck, they watch the video, they see the other investors and some of the notes, they can ask the founder a question if they want to. Um, and then if they like what they see, they can invest. The minimum investment's a hundred bucks. Um, the, the median is 250, the average is a thousand bucks. And then some people investing 50 K a hundred K. Um, but yeah, it's very easy for that investor to then invest in this company that they're interested in, create a WeFunder account and invest, um, through the website in yeah two or three minutes. Okay. All right. And so that, is there any tools or tips that you would recommend to our listeners as far as some, some website lead generation? Um, can you explain the question again? What do you mean um, by that? Yeah, so I mean, is there any tools that you guys are using and any strategies, the methods currently that that help you guys uh, generate more more uh, CTAs? Um, on the founder side, um, yeah, I would say it's it's less kind of digital or kind of you know mass marketing. We're not really doing any ad spend. We we've kind of experimented with like you know Facebook, Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads down the years, focused on the founder side of the marketplace, but we haven't really made the economics work there. So um, I would say we're more focused on um, you know you might call it like sales or business development, where 
people on my team and kind of reaching out to connect with um, founders directly versus like, you know, um, kind of digital acquisition. The one exception to that may be around kind of content. Um, so obviously we have, you know, social media presence um, and, you know, at various times we've kind of experimented with, you know, blogs and content strategy, but it's not really, we have a podcast at Venture Capital but it's kind of not really a, a major focus for us um, right now. Okay, all right, perfect. And so then is there, <clears throat> but let, let's switch gears then a little bit and let's talk about you as a leader, you being the VP of fundraising, uh, therefore we fund, what are some key tasks you like to focus on your day-to-day -day work? Um, I would say individual contribution. I lead a team, but um, yeah, I kind of realized like in the last year or two, um, that I really enjoy individual contribution. And I think there's this kind of stereotype that, okay, when you are senior leader, you kind of step back from individual contribution. And of course that's true to some extent, but you know, if I am very good at that and I really enjoy it and that gives me energy, then, you know, like, I think it makes sense a lot of times to keep, uh, doing that. Um, and I think that's where I can add a lot of value to the team. So it's probably a kind of unconventional answer, but, um, and for me, that means, you know, uh, being on the phone a lot with, um, startup founders that are considering raising a WeFunder, um, you know, doing, doing outreach and building relationships with referral partners, um, you know, helping founders with their fundraising strategy or their fundraising pitch, um, and just, you know, staying super close to the customer, trying to lead by example. Um, and just hustling super hard. We found a still a pretty small startup. We're kind of 35, 40 people. Um, so, you know, everyone, it's just like startup pace, like very frenetic, um, very, pretty chaotic. Um, so yeah, that's probably the, the kind of best answer to the, to the question there. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. I like that. So then is there, is there any, how do you like to stay up to date with all the news in the marketing world as far as trends, strategies, is there a preferred channel that you'd like to go with? Um, yeah, I am often on, you know, LinkedIn and Twitter and, and kind of clicking on stuff that, that catches my eye. Um, I really like podcasts. So, um, like, you know, Harry Stebbings, I like, um, you know, or, uh, Logan Bartlett that I guess it's less around kind of marketing, go to market strategy and more around like the industry or the kind of sector of like startups, um, and investing. Um, so yeah. And then there's kind of other folks on the team that are kind of experts in digital marketing, um, you know, who are more focused on, on, you know, staying on top of kind of digital marketing trends. All right. For perfect. All right. Awesome. Like that. And well, let's jump into our next section then here, Johnny, which is our rapid fire question rounds. Are you ready for them? Yeah, let's go. All right. First off then is what is the last book that you read? Last book that I read. Um, I think was Amp It Up by Frank Slootman. If there would be no batteries in technology, then Johnny, what would be that one thing that you want to have fixed for your role as a marketer today? Um, access to everyone's email. <laughs> Everyone that was email, so I didn't easily uh, reach them. Okay. Uh, definitely. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Next then is if there's one repetitive task that you could automate, what would that be? Uh, probably, uh, sending, sending old emails. Okay. Interesting. All right. And, uh, well, lastly, I mean, th there's no doubting your, your, your experience already, but what would be that one piece of advice that you would give yourself if you were to restart your journey as a marketer today? Um, that's a good question. I think focus on kind of quality, um, versus quantity, um, and you know, focus on the very you know, small number of kind of key partnerships and key relationships versus kind of um, boiling the ocean or maybe not boiling the ocean, but like going kind of bottom up. Um, I definitely even as a balanced strike there, but um, yeah, I think I was kind of over the years skewed a little bit too far on the kind of quantity versus quality side. All right, interesting adv uh, advice there. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. And well, we, Johnny, we are coming to the end of the show here today, but before we do end, I do want to give you the last word. 
Say someone forgets everything about the interview today. What is that one thing they should remember about WeFunder? Yeah, I think um, if you're a startup founder looking at raising capital, um, WeFunder could help you do that um, and build stronger relationships with your customers and community in the process. And if you're you know, someone that's passionate about startups and interested in startups, then um, check it out. It's it's a place where you can become an angel investor in a startup that you think is cool for as little as $100. Um, it's really kind of lowering the barrier to entry for so anyone to be an angel investor, not just uh, millionaires. So um, check out the website, check out some of the startups fundraising on the website and hope you might be um, you know, an angel investor in one of the startups fundraising on WeFunder um, today. Well, there you guys heard it. Check them out at wefunder.com. Johnny, thank you so much to, for being on with us today. To our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm looking forward to our next episode at Path Monk Presents. Thanks a lot, Johnny. Thanks, man. See you soon.